Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and my camera is fixed. I hope this looks better. <laughs> I know so many of you, I couldn't figure out the lighting on my phone. It would go light and dark and it just made my editing a nightmare. And my camera lens should have been in here about a week ago, but it was delayed and of course, you know. So, all done with the phone. I hope this picture looks nice. Please let me know in the comments below. Um, oh gosh, let's chit chat. <laughs> well, we're doing good on Christmas cookies. Um, we still got quite a few to go. And uh, like today, we're going to do, um, I want to do my snowball cookies, which I don't freeze. I bake them and then I freeze them after that. I'll tell you all about that. Um, I want to do some seven layer bars and the monster cookies. So we got like three that we're going to do today. And then you'll see that video tomorrow. Um, gosh, I'm excited. My camera's back. Oh my goodness. That was a nightmare. But I was busy yesterday, friends. I didn't do a video for you yesterday. I was so busy running errands. Plus, I'm working on cleaning my mom's house out, which is just, that's hard, you know. And um, her significant other is moving back to his farmhouse where he lived, where they lived for like 30 years there. And uh, so the house is going to be emptied out. I've got a lot of my mother's stuff. And, and it's like, I just love her. And I, I do miss her so much. And I'm trying to disperse all the things to all the people she wants to have something. And look what I got, friends. This. And there's a cobweb in it because it was on my mother's shelf. This bowl here. Now, some people will tell you, oh, that's a planter. No, this is a bread bowl. And this belonged to my grandmother. And this is the bowl she always used for her strudels, all, all her baking, all her bread. And it's, it's very, very used. It's got cracks in it, you know. So I don't think, I don't know if I would use it because I'm scared if I break it. You know, I want to pass this down. So I think... You know, I'm really thinking that I'm probably not going to use it because I do have a bread bowl just like this, only it's newer. And um, mine, I couldn't believe it. These are not cheap, friends. These bread bowls are very, very, very pricey. This one is very old. I mean, my mother was born in 1944, and she was second to the youngest of 18 children. So this bowl my grandmother had for quite a few years before that. So this is a very old bowl. And no, it's not stamped with anything. There's no markings on it or nothing. And I don't know if McCoy ever made bread bowls, but McCoy did, did his work and he never marked anything. His stuff, a lot of his stuff is unmarked, but that's beside the point. This is sentimental because this was my grandmother's and it's beautiful. But she had it for a long time. And I'm, I'm just scared that I might break it. So I don't touch it. You know, I'll find a good, safe place for it. Um, I got a lot of my mother's clothes and shoes. I cleaned her bedroom all out. <sighs> and, you know, I just don't want to. I just don't want to give it to Goodwill. Her clothes were top of the line. My mother dressed to the nines always. And um, she bought all her clothes at Macy's and the high end, you know, stores. And she paid good money for good quality. Well, I thought there's got to be somebody out there that her shoes are beautiful. My mother had no problems with her feet. Her shoes are gorgeous. A lot of them she bought brand new and never wore them. And she wears a size 10 and I thought, you know, it won't fit anybody. None of her clothes will fit. I mean, some of her sweaters will fit my daughter and she's going to go through them. But what's left, I found my neighbor uh, told me that about a gal who is in need of a lot of stuff like that. 
and uh, she's a school teacher. So I thought, you know what? She And then she told me, well, she wears a size 10 shoe and a size 14-ish pants. Well, that's what my mother wore. And I thought, you know, all these beautiful clothes can go to somebody who will appreciate them. So, and, you know, we've been dispersing her jewelry up and I got her paintings. My mother was a fabulous artist. And uh, I'll show you. I'll show you before we end the video. I'll show you the two paintings that I got from the house. The third one I left there because that one is to go to my sister-in-law. And um, so I left that in the house and she'll get that when she goes. Um, my mother had beautiful down feathered quilts that she brought back when she traveled to Europe. And um, those, you know, go to my daughter. So without getting into full detail, it's just been busy. You know, I'm trying to disperse everything to everybody and, you know, probably the stuff that's left over that nobody can use or, you know, you, you don't want duplicates of everything. I'll donate it, you know, so somebody else can use it because it is good stuff. No, I won't have a yard sale. I'm not going to do nothing like that or a rummage sale. I will donate it, you know, to, to, the, to people who need it. So... We're doing it. That's going to take a while. That's not going to be something we're going to have done in a day. Um, Mr. Wayna, he's headed down to Illinois, and he'll be back. Um, he's doing good. He's liking that job. We went up to um, Escanaba. Yes, Escanaba. I had all kinds of video footage on that. Ah, uh, the whole trip up there, we yacked, went over the bridge. We had a nice time, music in the video, you know, talking, Mr. Wayna talking to you. And believe it or not, I lost every bit of that footage. I had nothing when I come up. It's like I recorded all of it without the record button on. I was so, <laughs> I was so disappointed. I thought, but you know what, we'll go up there again. So the next time I go, we'll have this camera. So I'll have good video footage for you. Otherwise, the cookies are, are good. I can't wait to get, I'm going to have to start baking them sooner than what I thought. And because uh, there's extra people who I need to give cookie baskets to. My UPS driver is one of them. He just lives down the road from me, but he he's just a sweetheart. And uh, he always makes sure my packages are inside my door so that nothing, you know, the rain and that don't get them. He does really good. Um, I'm going to give him a basket of cookies, you know. And Sunday, friends, we're headed down to Ludington. To, uh, we're going to go to Walmart and we're going to go to Aldi's. And Aldi's, I think, is where I'm going to pick up a lot of my stuff for my Christmas baskets. We did adopt uh, one family we know for sure um, with the Christmas basket and, you know, other monies that we donated. My daughter and I always go in together. But it's a, it's a young woman who has two boys, and uh, she's not from around here in our community, but my neighbor knows her, and asked if we ever adopted people. Of course we do. We always adopt a family, possibly two for Christmas. We do our best, you know. So we're going to get Christmas baskets, and I already know what she likes from my neighbor, so I'm going to fill her basket with all the things her family likes, the ham and all the dinner fixings for a ham. So we're going to get all that from Aldi's, and we're taking you with us. My husband's going down there with us. And uh, so we'll do a little bit of shopping around Aldi's. I do want to pick up a turkey for the other basket and all the fixings for that. And then we'll have a video on putting it all together. Um, the one basket, you know, I wanted to do a video to show you. <laughs> I wanted to do a video to show you guys how I do, how we deliver these baskets because we literally put the basket on the porch. Sometimes it's at night so they don't see us, you know, and we knock on the door and I'm telling you, we run like heck. And they always have to give me a head start because I'll trip and fall and skin my knees and it just won't turn out pretty, you know. So we might be able to include that because not with this gal, 
I'm going to give her basket to my neighbor to deliver to her. But she has no idea where it's coming from. And she'll never know. It's just the way it is. You, we don't let anybody know what we do. <coughs> or who they are. You're not supposed to do that. That's the fun of giving. Is they don't know where it come from. You know. It's like pennies from heaven. Anyway, we, um, it's been raining the last couple days here, and then it got really cold, and things got icy. Well, we were on our way home from my mother's house the other day, and I almost had a stroke. We had the big trailer, and we were pulling a bunch of stuff from her house back home here, which she lived about 10 miles away from me, and it was icy. Some of the road was bare, and some of the road was icy. Well, you know, up here in Michigan, we can drive on anything. It, we could drive through three feet of snow, you know, but we had a low tire on the truck on the driver's side and we're coming down and we're going about 45 miles an hour and all of a sudden the truck went this way and the trailer went, went, it almost jackknifed. The trailer went one way, the truck went the other, and my husband was headed towards the pickers, and I'm screaming. I am mean, screaming. I've been in an accident before. I know it hurts, and it took me a long time to get past it. So I'm just absolutely in a in a, the epitome of a panic. Well, I, he's he's a driver. I'm telling you, my husband never panicked. He just started turning it the way the truck is going, and he didn't hit the brakes. He didn't hit the gas. Well, I think he accelerated a little bit because that is actually how you can get out of a skid like that is if you turn your wheel the way that the vehicle's going and, and just give it a little bit of acceleration, and it usually straightens out. Well, that's exactly what happened with my husband. That's what he did, but not before he told me to shut the hell up. He screams at me. My husband never hollers at me. And he's like, would you shut the hell up? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I can't. It's just natural reaction. You know, you just scream and holler and bloody murder. I, you know, we're going to hit the pickers and it's going to hurt. Oh, it was funny. Then we got all done and he looks at me. And he says, I love you. And I'm sorry I yelled at you, but man, you're going to get me in a panic. <laughs> How else am I going to control this? So we got out of that okay. And then, you know, it was so icy on the road and that tire was so low that we were losing air in it to truck tire. I don't know if we ran something over or what. He's fixed it since then. But uh, we only could go about 20 miles an hour on the way home because it was so icy. And the truck would just break traction. But boy, that was an experience. Not one I like to go through. I don't go in the ditch because I drive like an old grandma. I don't I don't care who's behind me. I, I don't care. I go slow. If I have to put my four ways on, that's fine. If you're in a rush, go around me. You know, I go slow enough. Always allow myself an out. Because you know when you start skidding on ice, you speed up. While everything else is in slow motion. <laughs> Oh, man. And there's no snow on the sides. Usually we've got, you know, snow up to our neck. So the edges of the road got big snow banks, you know, five foot tall, six foot tall snow banks. So it's like, you know, you just bounce around like a pinball. You bounce from one side to the other. And, you know, you don't go in the pickers or in the ditch because it just knocks you back into the road. They're bumper guards is what I call them. Our snow banks are bumper guards. But it's not fun when, when it's icy and there's no snow, no traction, no nothing. So that's all done. But anyway, um, I'll show you my mother's paintings. My mother was a fabulous artist. I did tell you that. Um, I got a beautiful set of dishes that my mother had saved for me. Um, and I, I've known that for the last... 40 years that, you know, those would be mine when she passed away. And I just never really worried about it. I never thought nothing of it. And I cleaned them all up because they were so dusty from her china cabinet. 
and I got them all cleaned up and I packaged them up and I, I packed them up very nicely and we put them downstairs on the shelf for right now because I really have nowhere to put them and I don't want any of them broke. They're beautiful. Um, beautiful. It's, it's, uh, I don't want to say bone china. It's fine china anyway. And it's a serving for 12. Service for 12. Beautiful set of dishes. And they're a pink and white with, um, they're all engraved. They're gorgeous. So that's something that I'll have. And it will get passed down, you know, it'll get passed down to the, my daughter and uh, granddaughters and what have you. So we got a lot of sentimental things from my mom. I always tried to get her back into painting and she just wouldn't do it. My mother traveled all over the world. I've got pictures of her, I think in every country imaginable. And, uh, she would come back and this was, she was in her twenties and thirties when she did all this travel and all over the world and she would come back and from memory alone, she'd paint pictures of what she's seen. Just absolutely amazing. Well, when she quit traveling, she quit painting. And I don't know if that was her only inspiration or what it was, but she always would say, yeah, when I retire, I'll get into painting. When I retire, I'll, you know, I'll get back into painting. And I said, mama, you need to paint something for your granddaughters, you know? And, uh, I said, you really should paint something for them or show them how to paint, work with them, you know, but she never did. And she didn't retire till a year ago, a year ago in November, she retired and she passed away that following year in May, this year in May. So my sweet mother never got a chance to enjoy retirement and paint again. And that's a sad thing, but we do got paintings and the, the, the granddaughters will ultimately get paintings from her. So, but man, I couldn't believe how she'd paint all free handed and just by memory alone, just amazing. She used to work with a, a gal we called Franny Bananas. Um, Back when my mother was in her early 20s, and even before uh, my sister and I were born, they had a little, uh, Franny Bananas, Franny Harrett was her name. We called her Franny Bananas. I don't know, just a name we gave her. Um, but she had an art gallery called Bean Blossom of Onekama. And she used to paint, you know, that art gallery. She taught my mother how to paint and pottery and you know all kinds of stuff so i've got little paintings and little things that my mother had for years that she made when she was very very young and i still have them so i'm i'm kind of it's hard to explain because it doesn't mean a whole lot when they're alive because you have them but when they pass, it's like these works of art come to life. You know, it's like that's, it's sentimental. I, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, I've had a, a hard time cleaning her house out. I'm glad that she's no longer in pain, but I miss her terrible, you know, and life has to go on. So. Anyway, with that being said, that's going to take a while to finish that up. Ultimately, I am going to sell that house. Um, I don't want two houses. And my mother and I talked about that a while back. That, you know, that house would be good. Just sell it and let somebody start a family in it and have a happy life in it. You know, because it's got a lot of happiness in it. And it is a beautiful little house. So we will be selling it. Um, everything else is going good. We don't have no snow. I can't believe we don't have any snow. None. Our winters are getting milder every year. I could almost go out there and cook on the fire pit. The chickens are doing good. The bunny rabbits are doing good. The loose one, he's still out and about. He goes from the front yard. He's all over the yard. 
hope he's having himself a good old time. The chickens are not laying eggs yet. I don't know how long it's going to take before they decide to, you know, they're done molting. I don't know. Usually you get at least a, a couple eggs a day, but I don't, I'm not, I haven't gotten any eggs. Not one egg in about a month. I have to go and pick up feed today. I'm going to have to go to Manistee to get it. Well, we might go Sunday instead. But the Amish gentleman that we were buying our feed from closed up shop. Just got out of the feed business like overnight. So the only other option we have is to go clear to Manton. And I don't want to go to Manton because that's about, you know, 40 minutes there and 40 minutes back just to get feed. No, that isn't feasible. So I think we're going to, it'd be cheaper anyway to go to Manistee because it's less gas. We'd use a lot of gas going to Manton just to, to pick up feed. And yes, we might say, save a buck or two a bag, but we're going to have that in fuel. Whereas we're going to go to Manistee and pick up feed and, you know, we won't have that much gas, but yes, we'll have an extra buck or two a bag and it, it works out. Feed's not cheap anymore. It's gone up a little bit more. And uh, thank goodness I only buy it. I only have to get feed about once every six weeks because I buy about 300 pounds of it and um, for the chickens. And, and then I buy them 100 pounds of scratch and they get their scratch every day. But I need to get some oats too because that's what helps keep them warm in the wintertime, the oats. And I know a lot of times I'll go to the Amish store and I'll pick up oatmeal, big bulk bags of oatmeal, and I'll heat them. I'll cook it oatmeal, you know, I'll cook it for them. Big old pot. I'll cook up the oatmeal. Won't put anything in it, just oatmeal. And I'll take it out there when it gets really cold. When it gets like zero or below, then I feed them warm oatmeal. And it helps to keep them warm all day. But uh, these are cold weather birds. Literally, it's harder for me to keep them cool in the summertime than to keep them warm in the winter. Go figure. They get hot and they start panting and they have a hard time in the summer. That's why we've got tarps all around there so they've got shade. I always buy a bag of ice and I fling it in their ice, um, I fling it in their water pail so that it's nice and cold for them. Sometimes I'll just take um, like some of their scratch and I'll mix it with bottled water and then I'll throw it in the freezer and then I'll just fling it out there in there and they pick at it so they get cool too. I got all kinds of tricks to keep them cool. And uh, it, does, it does pretty good. And sometimes I just turn the sprinkler on when it's really hot out just enough to just miss them, barely missed them. And um, they kind of like that. They, they gather around there. It's, it's hilarious. But yeah, just so that they get a little bit of misting and then it cools them down. But it is harder to keep them cool in the summer than warm in the winter. But when it's brutal cold out there, which we do get, that's when I give them hot meals. The spoiled girls, I'm telling you. I've got my Christmas tree up, finally. Um, I didn't, I did get that, uh, that uh, gal from Costway sent me a Christmas tree to review. However, it's one of those, what do they call them? Not flogged. Flocked? It's got the white sprayed on it. Oh, I can't do it. That white, you, you just open up the box and it's like this styrofoam that's, it, it gets everywhere. And I, I don't like that. I just like a plain old green tree. So up went my Charlie Brown tree and I got it all full of ornaments and I was gifted. And by the way, Dolly, thank you so very much. She sent me, Dolly was the one that had, um, that got a, took a direct hit from, I think it was I, Ivan, Ian, the hurricane that just went through, took a direct hit and had a really hard time. 
and wasn't sure what to do. So when they set up their GoFundMe account, I promoted it so that, you know, people could see it. And, and, and those of you who could offer a few bucks or whatever could, could lend a hand to her. Anyway, she sent me the most beautiful, and I mean beautiful, I believe they're hand-painted ornaments. I'll have to show them to you because they are just beautiful. And I put them on my tree. They're already on my tree. I love them. Thank you, Dolly. Those, I didn't expect that. What a beautiful gift and a, just a pleasant surprise. I opened that up and my husband even said, my goodness, those are pretty. You know, and men, they don't never say that. But when I opened that up, my husband just fell in love with them too. So they're gorgeous. I often wish I could paint like that. I, I, I'm telling you, these people that can paint, it's just what a talent. My mother could do that. I, I just never, never took it up. My mother tried to teach me a lot of things when I was old. Now, she taught me how to crochet when I was about four or five years old. And I can crochet anything, you know, follow a pattern, do crocheting. But I don't do a whole lot of crocheting. I learned how to sew, and I do got her sewing machine. Um, remember, I told you I had the sewing machine upstairs that Tracy and I couldn't figure out. We, we couldn't figure out how to fix it. And I know my mother could have, but she was so sick that I was not about to try and get her to fix that. There's no way. So I just let it go. Well, I forgot my mother had a beautiful sewing machine. So I've got my mother's sewing machine. And how precious is that? She's made quilts on that for all the great-grandchildren, all the grandchildren when they were babies. That sewing machine, she made all those quilts and everything with so much love in it. And she took pristine care of her machine. So one of these days, because I do know how to sew, one of these days I'm going to get that machine out. And I'm going to start sewing myself some aprons because I go through aprons like you wouldn't believe. I just blow through them. I, I need some heavy duty ones, but I don't like big heavy aprons. I know the last two that I just got from, excuse me, the last two that I just got from Amazon, um, the one is real lightweight, my orange one, I, I like it, but it's so big and bulky right here by my boobs and I, I don't like that. So I got to figure out a way that I can, you know, take that in a little bit. And the black one, I love it, but I got too big of a size. So it's a little too big for me. And in order to get it to fit right, the neckline is up pretty far, but that's all right. I still use it. But if I can sew my own, then I can sew them to fit me better, you know, I love denim aprons. They have one, and I'm thinking of maybe I should get it um, through Amazon. It's and it's not that expensive, and it, but it's a it's a lightweight denim. And I thought, oh, that would be nice. So either that, or I'm going to pick up some denim material, and I'm going to start making some aprons. I think I can do that. I got you know we got tons of aprons. My mother made made aprons too. And uh, she also would get the plain white aprons and she would embroider them. And I've got one that she did for me. I've got hers. I did take her apron. So, and, I, and I'll never wear it because I don't want nothing to happen to it. Um, and, and you never know. I say that now, but, you know, years. Okay, my camera just shut off. It does that sometimes. I don't know what it is. But, you know, years from now, I might decide that I get a lot of joy out of wearing her apron. Who knows? Maybe my food will taste better. <laughs> my mother taught me how to cook, and my aunts and even my uncles were fabulous cooks. My grandmother, even my grandfather would cook, except they'd laugh because he'd always burn his pea soup. <laughs> I got all kinds of family stories. 
Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to wait, you know, I wait a while, you know, maybe I, cause I got to do my cookbook first. So after I get my cookbook done, my third one, then I'm probably going to dabble in making some aprons. And if any of you have any ideas about them or any patterns, cause I, I like, I don't like the buckles where they adjust. I like just a solid piece that goes around, you know, and it comes about yay, you know, just to cover your girls. And uh, and then I like them when they come around because I like to tie them in the front. And, of course, I'm quite thick. So, you know, I have to have some long strings. I'm working on that, though. I am walking every, let's say I go up to the community center because it's just too cold and icy to walk out here. So I go up to the community center three days a week and um, walk. I'll walk. Uh, 10 trips around is like a mile. So I'll spend an hour up there walking. My husband was up there the other day and him and I, believe it or not, you die laughing. Him and I were playing basketball and I whipped his butt in basketball. <laughs> but I shoot it like an old lady. You know, I can't, I can't shoot a ball. I never could. I have to hold it down or, or shoot it, you know, it's hilarious. But I, I got more baskets than he did. And yes, I ran around that court catching that ball and did the best I could. But any movement is good for you, especially when, you know, all I do, I'm, I'm, I'm home all the time. And yes, though I'm standing up and I'm walking around and I'm up and down the stairs, that's not enough, obviously. And I really had trouble because when my mother's cancer came back last fall, I I was down uh, um, almost 40 pounds. I was almost done smoking, friends. I was almost done. I was down to about five cigarettes a day. And that's hard to do. And I was really doing good with it. My mother's cancer came back. And I lost all my bearings. I did nothing but eat and smoke and cry for months. And kept my composure while I was taking care of her. But that's all I did, friends, was cry and eat and smoke. And when I had to do my videos, of course, I kept my composure because you just have to. But it got the best of me. So I'm back up all my weight. I gained back my 40 pounds. And I smoked like a chimney and so now it's like I finally got a hold of myself <laughs> got put myself together so I'm eating a lot healthier and yes we're gonna do um, a video too on a nice um, sheet pan healthy sheet pan dinner that I put together on another video we're gonna make that probably tomorrow anyway so I got a hold of myself I'm eating better I'm smoking less Thank you, Jesus. Um, before, when I was almost done smoking, I was taking Chantex. And it does help. My goodness, it does help. Well, they quit making it because they found cancer-causing agents in it. I don't, I, I don't, that doesn't make any bit of sense to me. Because somebody who smokes, that's, that's, that's cancer-causing, you know. And if this stuff that helps them to quit that they're not going to take forever has cancer-causing agents in it, but it, yet it, it, it stops you from smoking and, you know, maybe three months you'll take it and then you're done, why would they stop? I don't get it. I don't get it. So now anybody who smoked who has quit knows it's not easy. It's not easy. The least little bit of of hard time that you have, you're looking for it. You got two things to break. You got the addiction to break, which I think that's easier to get rid of than the habit. The habit is, is what gets you. You smoke for so long, you've been married to those cigarettes, you know. Well, anyway, I was almost done. So back to square one I am. But you never quit quitting and you never quit doing good for yourself. So we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, I don't, I don't get ugly or, or, um, I don't get, 
mood swings or, you know, what I call a bear with a sore bum when, you know, you're not smoking. I, I just, I eat and you got to have, you got to be doing something. So I'm trying to do two things at once with no aid, uh, um, aided help. And it, it's hard. And, but I'll get there. I'll get there. I won't quit quitting. So bear with me, friends. Anyway, I need to get going because we need to get baking. Um, and I have to go up and get... I'm out of... I got down front. I am out of um, coconut, and I wanted I want to get a good recipe. A gal on there did send me a good recipe for date nut date nut cookies, date filled cookies. I'm gonna try them. We're gonna try them, and uh, if it's a flop, if I flop them, you'll see that I flopped them because it's all going on camera, and I'm not hiding nothing. Sometimes you make cookies. Sometimes you get sidetracked and you burn a tray. And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, no, it's that's the way it is. Sometimes I flop a cookie recipe or a cake recipe or or a dinner recipe or, you know, I, I burnt hot dogs one day. I forgot they were on my stove and I had these charcoal briquettes on my beautiful um, <coughs> Martha Stewart pan. Oh my goodness, but I remembered my grandmother telling me, make some chili in it or boil a, a jar of tomatoes. So I cleaned it out the best I could and I just boiled the hell out of a jar of tomatoes in there. You wouldn't know it ever happened. Perfect. Looked like brand new again. But yeah, we do. I do that. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I sometimes fail and flop and it's like, well, how the hell did I do that? But I do it. So we'll try those date filled cookies. And if they turn out good, that's a plus. If they don't, we won't try them again. So, but I have to go get coconut so that we can make our seven layer bars. I'm going to definitely bake them off. I'm going to make the snowball cookies, which what, what I call them Russian tea. My mother's always called them Russian tea cakes. And that's all I know them as. So same thing as snowball cookies. So we're going to make the Russian tea cakes because I can freeze them already baked. They freeze beautifully. And um, I used to make those every year for my mother. For they, they At work, she'd always have a cookie exchange. And she was the cutest darn thing because I'd make her about five or six dozen of those Russian tea cakes. And she said as soon as she would take them in there, they were like vultures in a feeding frenzy, that they, those, those cookies would be gone in, in 15 minutes. But uh, she would tell them how she slaved over making those. Well, they knew better and they laughed, you know. They knew her daughter made them for her. I'd make everything for her. I did all their birthday cakes for them. All her co-workers, when they have a birthday, she'd say, can you make me a birthday cake? Yes, I can. Is it a man or a woman, Mama? You know, oh, it's for so-and-so. And, -so. and he, he, he likes, um, his favorite colors are whatnot. So, you know, I'd do her birthday cake so she could take them in there and it was pretty good. I, I miss doing that. So, but anyway, we're going to make the Russian tea cakes. We're going to do monster cookies. I call them hot mess cookies, but I think they really call them monster cookies. And the only reason why I call them hot mess cookies is because I should link that video so you can see it. My granddaughters, Stella and Sadie, about three or four years old it is now, I think, the video we made them and we made a hot mess making them. Yeah, so that's why I called them hot mess cookies. There is no recipe for them other than the closest thing I can think of is a monster cookie or a cowboy cookie, maybe combined monster and a cowboy cookie, but they're my hot mess cookies because my granddaughters and I made a hot mess making them and we had a ball. So I'll link that video so you can see it. It is kind of cute, they were so young. Anyway, the, the Russian tea cakes, the um, seven layer bars, we're baking those off because those freeze really good, and the hot mess cookies. And that's what we're going to do today. And then at dinner time, which will be in another video, we're going to do the uh, sheet pan dinner that I've got because my husband won't be here. 
And uh, somebody mentioned to me that they, they not cringe, but they wish I wouldn't mention when my husband was gone. Um, I'm alone in the house, but I'm not alone in the house. I've got, there's so many people around me, you know. And we're in a, in a community that we just don't have, it's just a small community. I mean, you know, if something happened, and yes, there's been break-ins before, but friends, I am protected. For those of you who worry when I say I'm here by myself, literally know that I am protected. 24-7. Plus, when my husband and I were working out of state, um, we didn't have, tr I don't want to say we didn't have trouble. We had a few people, and ultimately we knew the people. They weren't family, but they were, you know, acquaintances and uh, a few of them was able to help themselves to some of the stuff that we have you know while we were gone so we just put up cameras and uh, yes we got cameras and yes they're running so you know if anybody comes anywhere within the house the cameras are gonna pick them up I never pay attention to the cameras they roll they roll and every three months they, you know, start over again. So I'm protected. So don't worry. Please don't worry. Beside of that, if I scream, half a caliber will hear me. <laughs> I can't run. I'd have to say if something was chasing us, just like on Facebook the other day, I'd have to say, you know what, you all go on ahead. I'm going to just go meet Jesus because <laughs> I can't run. But I am protected. So let's get busy. I'm going to get stuff put together. Oh, I want to show you my mother's paintings. Let's go see her paintings. Now, I don't know how well you can see that painting, but that's one that my mother did when she was in her early 20s. That's another one my mother did of sunflowers. And that one I'm going to give to the little girls for their room. She did that in her early... All these paintings that I'm about to show you, she did in her early 20s. And there's another painting she did of uh, an underwater city. Uh, I believe she painted that when she came back from Vienna, Austria. Let's see. She got her little name on there. But yeah, that was that one. And my daughter, Susie, is getting that one. That one's to go to her. Okay, now this one is huge. And it's got a nice big frame around it. And I'm standing back about as far as I can. And let's see. Yeah, I'm back about as far as I can. But she painted this one as well. And it's just beautiful. I'll show you some of the up-close Looks of it with the tower and then the trees. This was when she also came back from Europe. And uh, she was painting all these. And they are beautiful. That one, friends, in all its glory, is mine. And she's told me for many years that that's mine. I love it. I'm going to hang it. Somewhere. It's pretty good size. I mean, it's it's not by any means small. I couldn't tell you just how big it was, but it's big. It takes up half of my freezer. See where my freezer is? It takes up half, half of my freezer, and it's going to slip. i got to put it back down. It is, oh, my God, I'm all falling. <laughs> Here we go. Let's get this. Put back around here, and I set it down there by our windows. My camera looks a little reddish, but maybe it's just the lighting out here. All right, so there we have it. Those are her paintings, and those, friends, are beautiful. Let's go back in here. 
I'll show you my tree. It's kind of dark in my house. But there's my little Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> it's lit up. I got my little train that goes around it, but it's all my grandkids got a hold of it, so I got to fix the train. They like playing with that train. But that's my little Christmas tree. And it is thin. And here, if you can see these, let me hold this up to the wall because you'll be able to see it better. Those are the beautiful ornaments, and they're the same flowers on them, but they're all different shapes that Dolly sent to me. And they're absolutely beautiful. And I mean beautiful. And then my other friend made me the little Christmas gnomes. Aren't those cute? Oh, well, his beard's hanging all over. But I've got all these bulbs that she made and she painted all around my tree. There were six of them. I don't believe how beautiful they were. So, that's that. I got to work on cleaning the kitchen and then we're going to get to baking. Back in the pantry, I wanted to show you one more thing that I got my daughter for Christmas. I don't usually buy stuff like this, but this is just gorgeous. I went and had my hair cut the other day, and uh, uh, she has a gift shop in her salon, and she has these cashmere scarves. Well, my daughter loves scarves, Susie. So I'll show you. This is, it's a nice size one. But this is a cashmere scarf. And I got it folded. But look at the peacock feathers on it. And then she's got the little fringy on it. And it's the rest of it's hanging up in the back. But isn't that beautiful? Can you see that okay? Isn't that gorgeous with those peacock feathers? I just love that. And that'll go with just about anything she wants to wear. Because she wears scarves all the time. So, I'm going to put that up here. I'm going to wrap that later. Um, we're going to go. We're going to get cooking. Or, excuse me, we're going to get baking. I have to run to the store first. <coughs> It'll be a whole nother video. I'm going to get this one up for you today so that you see it and 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 pretty close to real time because today is, I think it's the 8th of December, 7th or 8th. It is Thursday today, so you're going to see this video shortly from now. So you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for chatting with me.